This is for an owner who wants to make some uh, changes to his ignition wiring. And uh, he's a little unsure what is going on inside the, uh, the wiring harness. Um, it's hard to see uh, where the wires are going when they're all wrapped up inside the wiring harness. So I've just run some temporary wires hanging out here in the open to make it uh, easier for him to, to see what the wires are and, and where they're going. Um, the circuit starts at the yellow bulkhead connector. And there's a white wire that runs from the yellow bulkhead connector over to the resistor grid. And real quickly, let me point out that every once in a while you'll run into an owner who insists that the resistor grid will only work if the white terminal is on one of these two resistor grid terminals, I can't remember which one, and the white with yellow is on the other. Um, and that if they're reversed, that your ignition won't work. Um, that is incorrect. The resistor grid is not polarized. Okay, It's not polarity sensitive. Um, it's bi-directional. It works in either direction. So you could put say white on the top and run around to white with yellow on the bottom or you could put white on the bottom and run up to white with yellow on the top uh, the resistor grid will work identically in either direction but from the resistor grid you have a white with yellow wire now I'm using just a plain yellow wire but in the factory wiring harness it's white with a yellow stripe and it runs back to the positive terminal on the coil. There's a plus sign on the positive terminal. So you have to put the white with yellow wire on the positive terminal, not the negative terminal. It's got to go on the positive terminal. And then the negative terminal, which has a little negative sign on it, goes back to the ignition module and this wire is white with a gray or slate uh, stripe. You have to look closely, but there is a stripe on that wire that's uh, gray in color. So that is how the original circuit is wired. And the purpose of the resistor grid, um, the white wire is going to be anywhere from battery voltage all the way up to full system charging voltage. But after running through the resistor grid, when it gets to the ignition coil, the white with yellow wire is only going to have somewhere between 6 and 8 volts on it. So that is what the stock ignition coil is working with. Uh, it uh, steps up um, the 6 to 8 volts that is on white with yellow and steps it up to probably somewhere in the 10 to 12,000 volt range and then feeds it out to the spark plugs. Let me uh, say something about the um, starter bypass relay. Um, I don't run one but I've just kind of stuck my old one on here temporarily so I can show them how it's uh, wired in. Uh, you will not find this relay on the um, DeLorean wiring diagrams. Um, like the official wiring diagram that's in the workshop manual does not have this relay. Okay, this was added uh, late in the car's development. Um, you need some sort of a bypass to the resistor grid during the starting cycle because uh, the battery voltage that will be on this white wire 
is going to be reduced by the load of the starter motor. It'll uh, most likely be you know, 10 volts at most, perhaps even less. And because you have both resistors here, it's going to cut that um, battery voltage, that reduced battery voltage, so low onto white with yellow that you won't be able to reliably jump the spark plug gaps and start the engine. So what you have to do is take one of these two resistors out of the equation. So that way the uh, battery voltage won't be so uh, significantly reduced. And the way you do that is by putting battery voltage at the halfway point. Now, this is a common tab that is joining those two resistors together. You have to imagine they're like in series. And so what you're doing is you're folding the two in series back on each other. So if you put battery voltage halfway between the two resistors, what you've done is taken this resistor out of the equation altogether. And uh, you only have now one resistor reducing the battery voltage. And you'll hopefully have enough juice to jump the spark plug gap and start your engine. Now, the official DeLorean factory wiring diagram shows this blue with yellow bypass wire attached directly to the solenoid on the starter motor. So that way when the solenoid is energized it would also send battery voltage up to this. Well, somebody finally got smart and said, wait a minute now, <laughs> electricity flows in both directions. So if you wire it up the way it is on the uh, wiring diagram, um, voltage will go from white through blue with yellow down to the starter motor and your starter motor will be spinning whenever ignition is on continuously because the solenoid will be triggered. So you can't do that. So at the 11th hour somebody cobbled together a relay which is, you know, hardly weather tight. This, this is really some DeLorean engineering at its finest. This, this thing is not made to be outdoors. It's made to be inside the vehicle. It's not a weather tight uh, relay connector. And, you know, the, the relay is not weather tight. But uh, that's what they came up with. And the way it works is you've got two blue with yellows. Okay. This blue with yellow is coming up from the solenoid on the starter motor. This is what's triggering the relay. And uh, the way they keep from mixing the two up, this blue with yellow, which goes from the relay to the resistor grid, has a female connector on it. This blue with yellow has a male connector. So you cannot put this connector on this terminal because to be male to male that won't work and you can't put this one going down to the starter motor because the harness coming up has a female connector on it so it'd be female to female so that's how they keep from mixing them up uh, the white wire um, from the factory there was this funny intermediate fitting that went on this terminal that would allow you to gang uh, two quick connects onto a single terminal. Um, I couldn't find my old one, so I just taped these two together to show you. But ordinarily, there's a fitting that goes onto the, re the uh, ballast resistor, and then it has two male spades that then allow you to put your two quick connects on that. And this is another white wire. You have the one white wire coming over from the bulkhead connector, you have the funny intermediate fitting, and then the second white wire goes over to the relay. And what will happen is when the starter motor is triggered, this blue with yellow wire will get voltage on it. It'll close the relay and then connect this white wire to this blue with yellow wire, which will put battery voltage halfway between the two resistors. And then when you turn off the starter motor, this 
wire here is no longer triggered, the relay is no longer closed, so there's no way for this white wire to feed voltage, you know, backwards into the starter solenoid. And then the black wire just goes up. There's a bundle of ground wires that are attached to the back bracketry. There's ordinarily bracketry that runs across the back of the engine compartment there. And uh, there's a bundle of ground wires attached to one of those uh, bolts on the bracket. And uh, for like the engine compartment light, there's ordinarily a switch there for the engine compartment light. And there's a couple of other things that are grounded to that uh, bolt. And then there's one wire that goes from that bundle over to, it's either the uh, intake manifold or the valve cover, I can't remember which, but that's how the bundle then gets grounded to the engine block and then through the engine block ground to the chassis ground. So that is how the starter uh, bypass relay is wired in and how it operates. Let me uh, conclude by showing how uh, my car is wired. Uh, the ignition circuit on my car. Um, this is the meat and the potatoes because uh, what the owner wants to do is to make some wiring changes to his ignition circuit similar to the way I've made changes to mine and uh, he was having a little trouble visualizing from my final post modification setup to his factory original setup that's on his car so that's why I was showing the factory original setup at the beginning of the video now uh, remember that I am running high energy ignition, HEI. So everything on my car is designed to put more voltage on the positive side of the coil. I'm running a different ignition coil. This is not the factory ignition coil. This is a Protronix ignition coil, which uh, has a much higher ratio of windings. It's also designed to uh, operate at uh, full charging voltage. And the net effect is it has the ability to feed more secondary voltage out to the spark plugs. And my spark plugs are gapped about 0 0.045, 0 0.046 inches. So um, the spark plug gap is what determines how much secondary voltage will be uh, sent out to the spark plugs. Small gap, less secondary voltage. Large gap, more secondary voltage. So, uh, with the understanding that this is all predicated on high energy ignition, this is my white wire from the factory running through the wiring harness through an old fuse link, this fuse link has been rendered redundant, to the common terminal on the resistor grid. Okay. Um, I do not use my resistor grid in vehicle operation. Okay. This is a big piece of metal connecting those two terminals together. It's just a junction point. So the resistor grid is not doing anything. The metal tab on the resistor grid is acting as a junction between those two, but these resistors have no voltage passing through them. So the only reason they're in the car is because I occasionally need them to make a video. Um, like at the beginning of this video, um, I've got a video where I actually measure um, voltage um, going through the resistor grid so people can see the electrical effect of it. So, um, I've left it in the car um, for making videos, but you know, it doesn't do anything other than just be a movie prop because I'm just using it as a junction point. And then, of course, you have white with yellow running back 
to the positive terminal on the coil. If I did not have my old resistor grid in the car, most owners running HEI do not have a resistor grid in their car at all. They take it out and throw it away and just run white directly from the bulkhead connector to the positive terminal on the coil. Um, mine is just a junction point, but I run white through the junction point to white with yellow back to the coil. If I did not have the resistor grid, I just run white directly to the coil. So that is what he's looking at on my car and how it compares to the factory original wiring.